Hello everybody. We are going to have a short lecture on gender. So what is gender? The term gender was introduced by the feminist scholarship in around 1950s for studying the role formations of women and men in the society. It discusses the issues of conceptualizing masculinities and femininities. We can say gender is a theoretical tool for social analysis to understand the inequality between men and women. To understand the concept of gender, the preliminary task is to differentiate between sex and gender. We can say sex is biological, gender is social. That was the preliminary discussion uh, happened in the feminist discussion uh, with theorization during that time, modern time we can say. So according to that theorization, gender roles are socially constructed See, to understand this social construction of gender roles, we can look at these uh, columns. You see, our culture ascribe the man and the woman some special kinds of roles. It is in our mainstream society. If we say cooking, we suddenly connect it to woman. If we say maybe driving, supervising, etc., we will suddenly connect it with man. How it happens? It's because of this kind of social conceptions that we are used to connect that way. Some particular roles to woman, some particular role to role to man, like that. Not only the roles, but also some kind of temperaments also we can see being connected automatically due to our sociocultural conceptions. If we say courage, we suddenly connect it with male. If we say maybe fear, it is a female thing, we would say. So these kinds of conceptualizations are existing in our society. This is what we are addressing with the gender analysis. Feminist philosophers who have initiated such discussion on gender, we will see who are the feminist philosophers. There are many different uh, philosophers, women philosophers to say so, but we will take two people mainly, Simone de Beauvoir from modern time and Judith Butler from postmodern time. Feminist discussions on gender and gender-based discrimination started in the US and Europe during mid-19th century. It was strongly argued in the mid-20th century second wave feminism. Simone de Beauvoir was a notable existentialist philosopher from Paris who contributed to this debate initially through her book, The Second Sex, which was published in 1949. She was living during 1908-1986. A famous statement by her, we can see from her book, The Second Sex, one is not born, rather becomes a woman. What does it mean to say so? It develops a kind of um, philosophy of being and becoming, which is of course connected to existentialist stream. The statement explains the social construction of gender to negate the concepts of femininity on the basis of existentialist philosophical analysis of being and becoming. Be beware also opened up the discussion of gender identity politics, which was a necessary foundation in the modern time. Though it was basically to problematize women's identity issues and subordinate position at that point of time, she has opened up the possible discussions on varied other gender identities too. 
Boe was criticized for holding a kind of essentialist position, which is an issue in feminist rising that prevailed in modern analytical frameworks. It is a problem to note that the experiences or issues of women from different socio-cultural backgrounds would not be the same. Postmodernist standpoint questioned the essentialist position and argued that there is no essentially common characteristic on which we could approach the category called woman. We have to see the differences in their backgrounds as of caste, class, religion, politics, ethnicity, and gender, etc. Thus, the identity politics is questioned and intersectionality issues are raised in gender studies by postmodern feminists. Judith Butler is one of the important thinkers who did like that, focusing a criticism towards these modern standpoints. She was, she is still living actually. She is an American philosopher, born in 1956. She wrote two books which became very famous, Gender Trouble, Feminism and the Subversion of Identity, another one, Body Stack Matter, on Discursive Limits of Sex. What is this trouble Butler is talking about? According to Butlerian viewpoint, the feminist debates over the meanings of gender lead us to a certain sense of trouble. This trouble sometimes ephemes some fundamentally alleged mystery of all things of feminine. The trouble is also about the prevailing norms of the normal and a trouble to get out of that trouble. This was a critique of identity politics that was envisaged by modern feminism as a foundational point. Butler didn't deny actually that the identity category is often presumed foundational in feminist politics, were deemed necessary to mobilize feminism for women's welfare. But this limits and constrains the possibilities of agency to be foreclosed by the po positions taken by the identity categories as foundational and fixed. Butler would discuss the ontology of gender to place some kind of deontology according to postmodern reconstruction and discourse she would make some different kind of points to talk about these issues. Postmodern discussion of gender by Butler, we could see the negation of identity politics in that postmodern discussion of gender by Butler and even the negation of an ontology of gender, we could say. It is a perspective that ontology is not a foundation but it installs itself into the socio-political and cultural discourse as a necessary ground. Gender ontologies always operate within established socio-political contexts as normative injunctions to fix the sexed and gendered bodies as intelligible to the culturally accepted norms of heterosexual matrix. It's a broader philosophizing of sex gender, sexuality, regimes beyond the heterosexual matrix. According to Butlerian gender analysis, the bodies of men and women are disciplined to be masculine and feminine through the disciplinary powers existed in cultures. The disciplines due to religion, culture, legal and social norms are regulating the gender concepts. So we can understand gender 
only on the basis of such factors. According to Jen Butlerian standpoint, sexed bodies cannot signify without gender and the apparent existence of sex prior to discourse and cultural imposition is only an effect of the functioning of gender. According to Butler, both sex and gender are socially constructed. Judy Butler argues that false distinction of sex as biological and gender as social introduces a split into the supposedly unified subject of feminism. Gender is always a doing, though not a doing by subject who might be said to pre-access to the deed. Another term she would bring in to talk about mainly this issue is performativity. But let submerge the gender dichotomy by explaining the instigation of gender on human beings as a perform performativity or a parody. For example, the doctor or nurse would be announcing at birth, it's a girl or it's a boy. We have heard that in our life every time there would be such an announcement. This performative act of utterance initiates and constitutes that infant's way of being in the world. The use of language to construct and deconstruct, as Derrida said, can make dominant discourses, as Foucault observed, to be powerfully ruling in our society. Through these discourses, the performativity of language makes norms universalizing and totalizing. The parodic repetition of gender exposes it as an inner subject and fixes the gender identity. The politically enforced performativity of gender as an act involves the effect of splitting the self-parody, self-criticism and the emergence of a new natural which eventually would exaggerate to reveal the foundational phantasmatic status, but let's say so, to bring in a kind of philosophy of gender. Butler's approaches of addressing the ontology of gender, subjectivity issue, social construction, and performativity, etc., produces a new form of social theory and philosophy of gender. Thank you.